Hey, this is John Marucci. It is the end of September, and we've had a great time this year camping in the RPOD 179, and it's time to winterize. So what we're going to do is we're going to take several steps to winterize the, uh, the RPOD camper today. I'm going to try and show those step by step as we go along. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the RPOD's level, and then we're going to take some of the bedding out because we need to get under the bed to use the pink stuff, the antifreeze, to go into the system. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get started right now, and hopefully you can follow along. Here we go. Okay, so I want to thank Tech and Trek from our pod owners forum for putting this together. I got this off the forum. Y'all used it last year and used it again this year. Did a great job uh, outlining the winterization steps. So if you look at this, first thing we're going to do is make sure the black tank, gray tank, are empty. They are because we emptied them the last time we went camping. So that's good to go. And the next thing is we're going to uh, unscrew the fresh water tank and drain it. The two things, the things we did already, taking the bedding off and then leveling the trailer already done. So we're on to number two, uh, drain the water from the fresh water tank. Here we go. Okay, so we're on to the next step and we're gonna drain the fresh water tank. And it's on the slide outside of the 179, but underneath. So we're gonna come along here and actually open this up by hand. So underneath here, is the fresh water and you can see down here here's the drain plug so we're just going to undo this by hand it's got some teflon tape on it pretty easy to undo and once it comes open all the remaining water that's in the tank is going to start coming out so that's going to take several minutes to drain but that has to happen you got to get all the water out of the fresh water tank for us to winterize this so that's the next step leave this right here the next step the next step we're going to do is uh, turn on the water pump and get any water out of the lines between the fresh water tank and the, um, and the sink here. So we're going to open these up and turn the water pump on real quick. And that'll just, that should just get any water out from the water pump between the, between the lines. So what we want to do is try to get water out as much as we can in the lines. This may spit a little bit. Either. So we've already drained the fresh water tanks and there isn't anything in there. So this is just water in the lines now. We want to get as much as we can out of there before we put the antifreeze in. It'll take a few minutes here. Okay, so the next step is we're going to open the low point drains. This will allow all the water, the lowest point, to drain out from the, uh, from the unit. So we'll get all the water out of the lines at this point and be able to go. The only other thing we have to do is obviously get the water out of the hot water heater. Now we're going to do the low point drains next. You want to come down here. Basically, this, again, this is the 179 on the, on the slide outside. There are these two drains here. These are the low point drains. We're just going to try and open these. And we may, you may have trouble, in which case we probably need to get a tool. Okay, if they don't come by hand, we can get a tool. So we're right back with a tool. Okay, so we're going to use vice grips on the top thing to hold the nut and this on the boat blower and undo the low point drain. <laughs> Wait in a second. Okay, and that's the that's the cold, right? And the hot is back behind it. Alright, leave those open, let those drain. Hey, so the next step is we're going to use the blow plug and uh, blow 20 pounds of pressure through the blow plug. We've got all the water out of the drains, open the sinks up. Uh, so now we, we have the low point drain plugs open and we're going to turn the air compressor on and put 20 pounds PSI through the lines. Here we go. the air we have 20 pounds of psi into the system you'll hear it and if you pan back there you'll notice it's pushing a lot more air out of the low point drain by doing this
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the anode rod with a 1 and 1 16th socket. I'm actually using a torque wrench here. But we're going to take the anode rod, make sure all the water is drained out, check the anode rod, put it back in, make sure we don't have any water in the hot water tank. So here we go. Okay, so we moved the mattress now. We've got the wood. We're just going to unscrew the wood so we can get to the pump and for the antifreeze. So we cleared everything out. It's level. Taking the next steps. Go ahead and take these screws out of the back panel of the bed. See, we this is screwed in. There's a screw here. There's one back in the corner, and there's one here, and one back in the corner. So we got to remove these four, four screws, and then by doing that, we can get down to the pump. If you want to bring the camera around, you can see the pump here. So underneath here is the actual outdoor storage right here I'm standing on. And then right here is the pump. So you got the water pump and the hot water heater is visible right here. Okay, so we've taken the bed out. We've unscrewed things so we can have the water pump under the bed visible. You notice it's still dripping out of the, the fresh water tank a little bit. So I'm going to do is just lower the front end a little bit. My uh, driveway's on an incline a little bit. I'm going to lower the front because if you'll notice, that hole is just a little bit to the front, so if it's sitting level, the actually basin area of the freshwater tank is actually lower than the escape hole. So we're going to just adjust a little bit downward to get the rest of the water out. We put the RV a little off level, and since the basin of the freshwater tank is lower actually than the, the um, plug hole, you notice I'm getting a lot more water out of it now. So you kind of want to get all the water you can out of the Freshwater tank. Okay, so we just re-leveled the unit. All the water's drained out. We had it unleveled so that the front fresh water tank could drain better. And we're pretty much clear water. The uh, low point drains are clear and the fresh water tank plug is no longer dripping. So we've got the water out. Next step is to bypass the hot water heater. Now in the 179 here, you can see both of those are open so that the water is going to go into the heater, the red obviously being the hot, the bottom one being the cold. And all we're going to do to bypass these is we're going to just turn them sideways, right, so that so that the uh, so they're going to bypass the hot water heater. So you see now they're looking straight. So we should be good to go. And then we're going to start putting antifreeze in this hose. Right, it goes through the water pump and into the system. So here we go. Okay, so the next step is to change the the knob here so that the water isn't the pump isn't drawing from the fresh water tank, but drawing from this two and a half foot outlet. We're going to put this right into the uh, RV antifreeze. So I'm just going to turn this here, and we're going to put this right into the bottom of the bottle. And then what we're going to do, we still have the low point drains open underneath. We're just going to turn this on for a few seconds until we get the pink uh, antifreeze coming in the low point drains and close the low point drain. So here we go. For reference, we almost used a gallon just getting the pink stuff to come out of both lines at the low point drains outside before you put the drain caps back on. So just FYI, it does take quite a bit of antifreeze to do this.
Okay, so we're now getting pink stuff coming through the sink after we put it in. So we have pink stuff going through all the drains, some thing going in the trap and going into the gray water tank a little bit, definitely getting it out of the, uh, the shower and the bathroom and also the outside shower and the toilet. So we should be good to go. We put a little bit of pink stuff down each one of the traps too, so I think we're winterized. Okay, to wrap up our winterization of the R-Pod 179, if you remember one of the first things we did besides having the gray and black water tanks emptied at the last uh, camping outing we then came and we uh, we drained the fresh water tank and got all the water of that and believe it or not that takes a little while you got to be a little patient this whole process probably took almost three hours from start to finish so be a little patient especially as you're letting the water out one of the tricks we did was we not only opened the uh, the fresh water tank to drain it, but we actually leaned the R-Pod down a little bit, off, uh, off level a little bit, so it would drain a little better. It took a little while, it took 15, 20 minutes to drain. And then if you remember, we then, um, we opened the low point valves, we blew out the, the air out of the uh, whole, all the lines and through the low point drains, and then, you know, got around to actually putting antifreeze in after doing those steps. There's a lot of different steps. Hey, so we're about done here with all the winterization. We did everything. Last steps we did was we took all the batteries out of like the smoke detector. And we had some of those puck lights that were in some of the cabinets, so we just unscrewed those and took those with us. Hooked up the trailer, it's ready to go now. One of the last things I did was made sure that all the lug nuts were tightened. So I got I have a torque wrench, to torqued them to 100 pounds per square inch. Check the air in the tires. I'm a little low, so one of the things I like to do is go up to Costco here in town and they have nitrogen to fill the tires so i'm going to get them topped off at 65 psi and then um, take it down to storage so we're going to store it for a few months before we take it out again anyway uh a good process i think the winterization went well uh, hopefully this video has helped you and if it has give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe anyway this is john Ritchie. have a great day thanks for watching